Hey everyone, this is Kevin from the chesswebsite.com and today starts the 2015 U.S. Chess Championship. We have 12 of the top Americans fighting for their shot at the prize pool of $175,000 and also the right to call themselves champion. Today's match, we're going to be looking at a game between two of the youngsters in the field. We have White's going to be played by Ray Robson, 20-year-old, rating of 2770. Actually won the Junior Championship in 2009, so very, very talented young star for the United States. And his opponent playing the Black Pieces today is Caden Troff, 16 years old. He is the 2014 Junior Champion. So both of these guys are very young, both very experienced at winning championships, so we actually get to see them face off in the first round and see if any of them can make a big, big splash in the U.S. championship. We'll, we'll go ahead and get started. Race starts with pawn e4, uh, pawn c5, knight f3, pawn to a d6, pawn to d4, and we get into the Nidorf defense after knight to f6, and then pawn to c3, Pawn a6. This is the Nidorf defense. A lot of different ways that white can respond to this. My personal favorite, I like to play bishop here to c4. And then you're going to bring it back to bishop here to b3. And really just hone down on this long diagonal right here. Since your opponent's played pawn to d6, more than likely they're going to bring their pawn up here to e5. They're going to have a backward pawn here on d6 that you can attack. But bringing your bishop back here to b3 is going to allow you just a lot of time to attack this square here on f7, which is a weakness for black early on. This is how Fisher liked to play. I studied a lot of Fisher when I grew up, so that I kind of mirror his play style. But... Uh, Ray Robson decided to play a little different. Uh, he played bishop here to e3, and this is more of the, the modern main line, so you see this more frequently. And from here, we see play continue with pawn to e5, as we talked about. We do see a backwards pawn here on d6, so something that white can potentially attack later on down the road. Knight back here to b3. Bishop here to e7, and black kind of has two options. You know, Caden can either play bishop here to e7, he could play queen here to c7. This is kind of a semi open file for his queen to attack, so he does have options. Decides to go ahead and opt for the bishop here to e7 with a quick castle on the king side. We see pawn here to f3, just supporting this pawn structure right here. Since white no longer has his queen pawn, uh, then he's going to be looking to just play pawn to f3, solidify his pawn structure, and then castle on. On the queen side, which is always exciting because after black plays bishop here to e6, then we do see queen to d2 and then castling on both sides of the board, which usually just means fireworks. And that's exactly what we're going to see in this game as well. So as we look at both sides, white's really going to be looking to dominate the king side. Uh, Ray really has a strong queen side defense. He'll eventually want to make sure that he gets his king here to b1 to protect the square here on a2. But it's going to be very easy for him to just push all his material up on the king side. Also wants to make sure that he continues to control the square here on d5. This is a very central square that right now he doesn't have a pawn. So he needs to make sure that his other pieces maintain that control. Later on, he does again have the ability to attack this backward pawn here on d6. Now if you're looking at Caden's side, his option is going to be just counterattack on the queen side. He knows that his opponent is just going to be throwing the kitchen sink at him on the king side, but the queen side is again where his opponent has castled and so he can start to push a lot of opponent put a lot of pressure on his opponent. He does have a nice little outpost here on d4. He can get one of his pieces too. He has a semi-open file here on the c file so he can get both of his rooks involved, really attack white on the king side. So from here we see knight here to d7 opening up the door for the rook in a8 to go ahead and get involved into the game. Pawn to g4, so we talked about white's just going to throw pieces and material over onto the king side. Pawn to b5, black counterattacking on the queen side. Pawn to g5, pawn to b4. And this was kind of exciting when I saw this, knowing that both sides are kind of going right at each other. Instead of just moving this knight right here, deciding, you know what, let's go ahead and change it up. Uh, let's just go ahead and trade off knights and just have a pretty aggressive game. So we do see an exchange off the board after the queen takes and the knight recaptures. Uh, then knight up here to a5, getting ready to attack here on c6 if he needs to. Now, it would be a mistake. You know, but the bishop could come here to a2. Ray does a really good job of setting a lot of traps that may not look like traps, but if the bishop were to come down here to a2, we get to see knight to c6, attacking the queen. If the queen moves, then the knight takes here on e7, check. 
forcing to take the knight here. And then all of a sudden, pawn to b3. This bishop is now trapped. The queen can come here to b2, and this bishop's going to fall. So that's not going to be good. Uh, Kaden does not fall for the trap. Instead, after the knight comes here to a5, decides to go ahead and play rook over here to c8, which I really love. Again, getting your pieces active on the board. Kaden really needs to make sure that he's attacking this queen side with his powerful pieces like his rooks. So after the rook here to c8, we do see a knight here to c6 attacking the queen. After the queen here comes here to e8, decides to go ahead and take that bishop off the board. This is going to be somewhat of an open game. So... Anytime you can take your opponent's bishops off the board, especially if you can trade with a knight, that's definitely not a bad thing. So after the queen recaptures, then queen up here to a5. This is now a very important square in peace, uh, the pawn here on a6. We see the queen here on a5 and both the bishop here on f1 are attacking this square. So black has to be very aware of this isolated pawn on here at a6 or it's going to vol fall very quickly. After the rook here to c6, we do see white play king over here to b1. It would be a mistake if we saw bishop here to a6 because rook to a8 would be completely devastating. So Ray recognizes that, decides to not take with his bishop. That would be very detrimental. And plays king over here to b1, as we talked about. Definitely a safe move. He needs to make sure that he does have a piece defending the square. The bishop here on e6, all of a sudden it can kind of disappear on you, but it's definitely attacking the square on a2. Uh, so he needs to make sure that he can roam around with his queen and still have control with his king here on b1, protecting the square on a2. Caden now plays pawn here to d5. I personally am not a huge fan of pawn to d5. I think if we look at what he's trying to do, rook to c8 makes a whole lot of sense. It gets his other rook involved into the action. It doubles up his rooks on this semi-open c file. White's going to have to be more reactive in this spot. Can't really do anything except try to defend against this attack. Um, but pawn to d5 all of a sudden allows Ray Robson to really have an exchange that I think favors him. So after the pawn takes, we do see the knight take here on d5, uh, the rook taking up here after the bishop takes, the queen takes, and white is kind of up as far as the material. He definitely has the double bishop pair, which is going to be just a pain for black to have to deal with. And so we basically have two bishops for a rook, and, and I would much rather have the two bishops on board than a rook, especially going into a very, very open in game white's going to be able to control a lot of the board with his bishop so i don't really i don't really think that caden made the best play with pawn here to d5 but you know you have to live with it and then hopefully he can find a way to get out of this mess in the end game so rook here to d6 forcing the queen to come back here to e4 uh, now comes down here to d1 forcing the bishop to come back here to c1 always good to make your opponent play defense uh, it doesn't want to make sure that he loses to a checkmate. Queen here to a g5, uh, and then pawn up here to f4. Very important how black captures. He, he does correctly capture with his queen. If he were to recapture with his pawn on f4, then all of a sudden white can play bishop here to d3. Threatening mate here on h7. Black would have to respond. You know, pawn here to g6 would be an option. Getting the queen involved. Uh, and then all of a sudden you would see this rook here on d1 fall. So that would definitely be bad. Instead, black correctly takes with his queen here on f4. And Ray decides to go ahead and just exchange off the board. He sees that he does have the material advantage. He can dominate the end game with his bishop pair. And so getting the queens off the board is exactly what he's looking to do. Now bishop up here to g2, seeing if black wants to exchange more material off the board. And it looks like Caden does, so we do see an exchange off. So now we really come down to the end of the game with two bishops versus the rook and the extra pawn here, which I think is usually going to favor the double bishops. Pawn here to g5. Pawn up here to c4, rook over here to c8, trying to protect this pawn. Pushing any further on the c-file. Uh, bishop up here to d5. Nice little outpost for white. It's going to be very difficult for black to really do much with this bishop and this pawn here on c4. And then both sides are going to get their kings involved. Again, anytime you get into the end game or even to the late stages of the mid game, once the queens are off the board, it's usually pretty safe to go ahead and get your kings involved. They can be a very, very powerful piece in any attack. King up here to c2. King to f6. Pawn to b4, and 
Ray pretty much has decided that, hey, his win condition is to go ahead and push. He has the pawn majority on the queen side. And on the other side, Caden is really looking to push with his pawn majority on the king side. So king here to f5, pawn up here to a4, pawn to g4, pawn b5. After the exchange right here, then we see the rook over here to b8. Bishop here to a3, and then pawn to f3. And this one subtle move is probably the, the biggest mistake in the game for Caden. Uh, and, and afterwards, he would kind of look at this move. But if you look at what White's trying to do, he wants to push this pawn forward here on the B file. And after pawn to f3, then all of a sudden Bishop to c5 is devastating it allows the pawn to now push forward here to b6 it can now come to b7 it's protected by the bishop and then all of a sudden you can see the bishop come here to a7 the rook can no longer support this square and black's just going to crumble right away now if instead black does not play pawn here to f3 let's say he plays king to e5 uh, then if we were to see bishop here to c5 to try to stop the attack then black can just go ahead and take here on b5 after the the pawn takes here on b5 we could see the king take here on d5 he could now threaten to you know take this bishop uh, and then he could take this pawn chase it up the board white's not going to be able to promote this pawn it's going to be very difficult for white to ever end up with the material to win the game and then all of a sudden black has a huge pawn majority on the king side it's not clear how he would actually turn this into a victory but definitely a much better situation than having his pawn here on f3 and then playing a bishop here to c5 and having no way to really push forward or now stop this pawn pushing up the board so rook over here to e8 pawn to b6 as we talked about push your pass pawn that's number one rule in chess uh, pawn here to h5 just trying to counter attack on the king side uh, but it's just not really going to do too much pawn here to b7 getting ready to promote to a queen here on the b8 square Pawn to h4, bishop here to a7, just another layer of protection once this pawn pushes forward. Uh, pawn to h3, king over here to d2, wants to make sure nothing crazy happens. If this rook does pass the chasm here on the e-file, the, the king can just come over here and make sure that you know ray blocks any try that black has to promote a pawn right here. A pawn here to g3, and then the queen up here to b8. And this is where the game in the kingdom decided to go ahead and resign. There's just no way for black to stop what white's doing right here. So really awesome game to see some of the youngsters uh, from the United States square off. Ray Robson, uh, again, just been dominating for a long time. At 20 years old, definitely uh, one of the young stars. So excited to see him in round one get a huge victory. Uh, Caden only 16, bright future again. The junior champion played extremely well. A few moves uh, that could have been a little bit better, but excited to see him actually in the tournament. Always good to see young Americans doing well in chess. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video the US chess championship is one of my favorites I get to see a lot of players that I follow throughout the year uh, but usually not at this high of a tournament level so it's, it's exciting for me to cover so I'll be trying to do as many matches as I can so stay tuned and thanks for watching